Shalom, this is Dr. Siva Modley. And I'm Pastor Jesse Modley. And you're watching Your, your Miracle, Miracle Moment. Moment. Today on the program, we're going to be talking about something that I've, I've hardly heard anyone preach about. Mm. I'm going to be talking about, well, actually, we're going to be talking about <laughs> the 21 gifts of the Holy Spirit. The 21 gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, most people know about the nine famous gifts. Yes. But there's actually 21 gifts that the Holy Spirit brings, right? 21 gifts. And we're going to study that in the Word of God today. Two steps, three steps ahead of everyone else. Yeah, because because that's how wisdom gifts. is. Wisdom is always two steps, three steps ahead. If you're a man or woman of God, if you are a child of God and you operate with the gift of wisdom, you'll always be two steps ahead of the whole world. If you're a businessman, you operate with the word of wisdom. Your business will be two steps ahead of every other business, all your competitors, because that's what the word of wisdom does. Now, that's the second gift of the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful gift to have. The third gift is the discerning of spirits, and, and I'm talking here first about the revelation gifts. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, the discerning of spirits. It's the ability to determine whether or not a message, a person, or an event is truly from God. So let me explain something about the discerning of spirits. It's not like the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom that's downloaded. The discerning of spirits is an ability that comes through what we call uh, the ability to be a seer. Mm. So discerning of spirits is something that manifests because you can see in the spirit. You can hear in the spirit. You can taste in the spirit. Mm. You can touch in the spirit. You can smell, smell in the, the spirit. spirit. Discerning of spirits only works on people who have operated or manifested the seer anointing. Yeah. So they are seers. So this is why, you know, the discerning of spirits is something that, was, that has greatly been misunderstood, right? Misunderstood. I once had a man that came to me and he said, Pastor, when a person falls backwards, that's the Holy Spirit, right? I said, generally, yes. And he said, Pastor, when a person falls forward, that's a demon, right? <laughs> mm. And I kept quiet and I said, oh, and I was looking for the word of wisdom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, well, what if the person falls sideways? What's that? Mm. <laughs> I didn't know how to answer. Now, you cannot discern intellectually yeah. the demonic. Let me say that. You cannot intellectually discern the demonic. You can't do that. You can't say because a person falls forward, it's a demon. They fall mm. back at the Holy Spirit. You cannot discern the demonic intellectually. It cannot be, the supernatural cannot be worked out with a logical mind. Let me say that, mm. as that. It cannot be worked out with a logical mind. You know, a few years ago, somebody took a CD, or I think in those days we call them LPs, right? Mm. Finals. And they played it backwards. Yeah. Back, what is it? What is it? Back track, I back think. tracking? Is that what it's called? It's called I, I think. think so, yeah. They played it backwards. And when they played it backwards, they heard these horrible sounds. I am Satan. Da, da, da. You know, all these mm. bad sounds when they're playing it backwards. Now, of course, no music is meant to be played backwards. Yeah. <laughs> but someone had this bright idea of playing it backwards. So they came to the conclusion now that all... All circular music is demonic, whether it's country, whether it's R&B, mm, whether pop. it's hip-hop, whether it's country, whatever it is. It's whatever all genre. demonic because they tried all those kinds of music. They played it backwards and it sounded demonic. Then they now had a more brilliant idea, right? Is that correct English? More brilliant, right? <laughs> a more brilliant idea. They decided to take the Christian singers, the gospel singers, <laughs> <laughs> and played their music backwards. So this is what happened. Mm. When they played the Christian music backwards, it went, oh, 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 all these <laughs> de demonic sounds were there as well. So they now concluded mm. that all Christian music is also demonic. Well done. Well done. You have no idea what you are doing because you <laughs> cannot discern the things of the Spirit through intellectual yes. means. Oh, logically. Now, that's why sometimes I watch the news and people want to say, that is God, that's not God, and these are professors mm. who, have inter you know, who are intellectuals. 
You cannot understand the supernatural through your university degree or your doctorate. You cannot understand the supernatural through intelligence mm. or intellect. Now, if you need intelligence, I'm not saying you don't need it, but you cannot understand the supernatural through that. The supernatural can only be discerned through spiritual means. This is why educated people who, who even study religions, who even read the Bible, they don't get saved. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them don't get saved mm -hmm. because they are, they are trying to intellectually understand this Jesus. Yeah, trying to figure right. him out. They're even trying to intellectually understand logically. miracles, signs and wonders, which you cannot do. But you, uh, spiritual things are discerned spiritually. You know, there once was a, a man that went hunting and he took his dog with him. Mm. And he shot this uh, bird, quail, whatever he was hunting. Mm. And it fell on the lake. And the retriever, his dog, went to get the bird. Yeah. Now he assumed when the dog jumped into the water, that the dog would swim. Swim, yeah. But this dog walked on the water. Wow. <laughs> right? Are you with me? <laughs> the dog walked on water, retrieved the bird, walked on water and came and gave it to the hunter. Mm. The hunter was shocked. Shocked. So the, he picked up his gun, he picked up his equipment, he went straight to the town to the professor, mm. right? the most intelligent man he knew there. And he said, I have to show you something. Come now, please. I have to show you. So this scientist was busy with his experiments and he pulled the scientist away. He said, you have to see this. Yes. It's... So he took this, takes the scientist to the hunting ground, waits for another bird to go over the lake and he shoots it. Mm. And he says, now watch. And the dog gets up, mm. walks on the water, mm. picks up the bird. And, and walks back. Walks back. And so the hunter turns and looks at the professor, the scientist, waiting for an explanation. Well, what do you make of that? And the professor says, it's obvious, your dog can't swim. <laughs> you see, uh, you see, the intellectual minds <laughs> can't understand supernatural yeah. things. Because... <laughs> Even if it had to bite you on the nose, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it because it's supernatural, right? This is why people struggle when they come to my meetings yeah. and they see miracles take place. They can't understand how a leg grows right in front of their eyes. They can't get that. How does a bone just grow? They're seeing it, but they can't mm, believe they it. They can't believe it. They can't get it. They, they <laughs> want to understand. They want to understand. How did this happen? It's mm -hmm. supernatural. It's a supernatural God. Your intelligence cannot understand it. So when something happens in the spirit world, and generally we're talking here now, something demonic comes. Now, yes, before I get to explain this gift a little, a little better, a little better <laughs> let me just give you another story. I went to, uh, to preach in a, in, a, in a crusade and somebody manifested in the meeting. And I turned around, you know, it was time for me now to pray for the people. Mm. I don't just run after demons and cast out demons when I'm preaching. My priority is to preach the word. Yes. Then I'll deal with the demons. The demons might just wait till I'm finished with the word. Then I'll get to them. They're not high priority. The word and salvation, lives, healing, miracles are high priority. So I don't work, so if demons come to disrupt my meeting, I keep them one, I keep them down one spot. I'll deal with you when I'm finished here. That's how I deal with demons. Yeah. You know, some people just, if a demon comes to the meeting, they leave everything they're doing, they're running yeah. after the demon. I bind this, they are bind this demon. So distracted, yeah. You, and you're distracted and you just lost the message you were preaching. Right? Don't get distracted by demons. You know, we call this in, in, in the deliverance ministry a trapping spirit. Mm. So it traps you away yeah, from it's what one of God the called you to do. Devil's use. Right? Now, yet this man manifested and, and so I went down to pray and I knew what spirit was in him. And I'll tell you just now how I knew. And the pastor said, he has this, this, this spirit. I, and I knew it wasn't what I'm seeing because I was seeing the demon inside. But the pastor was telling me some other demons that I didn't see. So I said to the pastor, how do you know these demons are inside him? Mm. And the pastor said, I asked him and he told me. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to the pastor, uh, did you not read the scripture 
that says Satan is the father of lies. Yeah. If he is the father of lies, why would he tell you the what truth. demon is inside? <laughs> why would he tell you the truth? You know, so, so this pastor was trying to talk to the demon to get information out of the demon. That's not a gift. Yeah. That's not a gift. And the demon will lie to you. Uh, the discerning of spirits. Nature to lie. <laughs> the nature to lie. The discerning of spirits is a gift that can only operate when someone has their spiritual eyes and spiritual senses open. Open to God. Right? Yeah. Write that down. So uh, the, the discerning of spirits only operates on people whose spiritual eyes are open and spiritual ears are open, spiritual smell are open, spiritual taste and touch are open, spiritual sight. Now watch this. When, when people come into the meeting, sometimes while I'm preaching, sometimes when I'm praying for them, I will see the demon on the person. Mm. That, that is the seer gifting. Yeah. So I know this person needs deliverance. If I'm praying for someone with a medical condition, let's say somebody has an enlarged heart, I will see, and again, this is not my personal ability. This is a gift of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Because I'm a seer in the Spirit. That's one of my giftings. So I see the person's heart. I see their heart. Then as Jesus heals the heart, I see how the heart is healed. Sometimes I can still see the problem in the person. And I say to them, how do you feel? They say, I'm healed. I'll say, no, you're not. Mm. You're not yet healed. And he says, yeah, well, you know. I said, let's get you healed completely. Then I see the healing completely and I say, now. They say, yes, I'm completely healed. Mm. So people can't deceive me or, or rather yeah. it's difficult to deceive me because you're just, just trying to deceive the Holy Spirit. And so, he's the spirit of truth. He's the spirit of truth. That operates from within you. So when people come to our meetings, I see the sickness, I see mm. the organs, I see the demon, I see uh, the situation or uh, the word of knowledge tells me what's happening in their home. Mm. The word of knowledge tells me past and present facts. The discerning of spirits is the ability to see what demon is inside a person to see what the demon is doing. Like, for example, I had someone, a lady that came for prayer and she was suffering with a spine, suffering with a spine. Now, she said she's been for this operation to that operation, that operation. But when I looked in the spirit, I saw a demon literally piggybacking on her. Mm. He had his claws into her and he was piggybacking on her. Mm. And so uh, I just went after this demon. I took him out. And in the name of Jesus, he was gone. The lady said, my back is healed. Sure. My back is healed. She was completely healed. Uh, I recently had another case where I prayed for someone who, was, um, who, who said they were HIV positive. And uh, when I went to pray for this person, I saw the demon that was manifesting mm. the HIV virus. So, mm -hmm. let me explain that to someone watching me. Demons have the ability to manifest sickness, right? We understand that, yeah. right? They manifest sickness. Demons even have the ability to manifest psychological problems. Now, demons can ma even manifest cancer. They can manifest AIDS. They mm. can manifest any sickness. Any disease and sickness. Now, what happens is sometimes... You can see what the demon has done and the, and the effects of what the demon did. And so that is when the person was oppressed by the devil, attacked yeah. by the devil. But other times you can actually see the demon on the person. But medically, medically the doctors have discerned a sickness. They've discerned yeah. a chronic Which condition. Shows, yeah, the symptoms right. in the, the natural. Because the demon brought symptoms into the natural mm. world. But it's a demon. So when I'm praying... I'm seeing the demon on the person, right? I'm not seeing cancer. Now, yeah. now please, I'm not saying that if you have cancer, you're possessed with a demon. <laughs> uh, understand what I'm, I'm trying to explain something here. So, I, so the de I see the demon. The medical world sees the manifestation of the demon. It calls it cancer. But I'm seeing the demon. So this is because of the discerning of spirits. Yes. It's the ability to see in the spirit. And, and when I bind that demon, cancer's gone. Yeah. Cancer's gone. 
because the demon brought the symptoms, right? Uh, sometimes I can go into a place and I can smell a demon being present in that house or, in that, or, or a demon being present on a person. I can smell mm. the demon. I can also smell uh, habits that pe- people have. Uh, if people are on drugs, you know, illegal drugs, yeah. even they're smoking. Even whatever. if they say they don't have that. You don't have, don't do it. But I can God actually reveals. smell it on them and see mm. them. Even though they don't smell, but I smell it because it's part of the discerning of spirits because supernatural smell is the ability to smell out mm. the person's habits and the demons on the person. Then there are times when I said to you, I can feel, if, I, if a book is cursed, has a, has a curse on it, there's certain satanic people and cults They call themselves Christians, but they're not Christians, they're cults. Certain cults will produce books. Yeah. Certain cults, even uh, 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 marine spirits, people led by marine demons, write so-called Christian books. And these books are found even in Christian, Christian bookshops. Christian bookstores, yes. Right? Now, when I go and, and I select a book, without even opening the book or reading the book, and I don't know this book has yeah. a demon on it because... It's just a book. You know, I'm seeing the cover. Just like you will see a book. But the moment I touch it, there's a sharp pain that I feel on my forehead. That tells me there is a demon in this book and it's cursed. Mm-hmm. Demons can attach themselves to books. Yeah. Because right? the person who wrote it was influenced by demons in demons. the first place. But they also attach themselves to yes, books. Yes, they do. To But they don't just attach themselves to statues and um, wind chimes and uh, all that stuff. But they also attach themselves to to books yeah. as well. Anything, any living object or any... Even to jewelry. Jewelry as well. Mm. Right? Even jewelry. Yeah. We know that Satan, uh, Satanists take lots of jewelry and mm. they put a curses over jewelry so that when you wear it and you buy it from a legitimate jewelry store, yeah. you, that curse comes on you, right? So we, we, we understand that. Mm. And we know about that. It's quite a common practice. Now, coming back. So if I touch it, I feel a headache immediately and that tells me there's a demon there. Mm. So it's another way the gift operates. All these gifts are called the, uh, the seer gifting. Yes. Seer gifting. Now, you, you will only have the discerning of spirits if you have a seer gifting. So a seer gifting, now watch this. Watch this. Oh, this is so powerful. We will have to do another one hour, one hour special, special on this next week. Yeah. Right? Because there's so much to learn here. <laughs> right? So let's go. Let's see how far we can go. So a seer gift or discerning of spirits is not something that you understand. So let's just say you, you look at a person and you, you, you understand, hey, there's a demon here. And, and that could be the word of knowledge, not the discerning of spirits. Mm. It's a word of knowledge. The discerning of spirits is where you see, smell, touch, and you discern it, you, your, 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 your spiritual senses, senses pick up, mm. discern, acknowledge the presence of the demonic. And, and it's undeniable. You know. You know it. Yeah. You know it. You know it. So I've been into some people's homes, and the moment I entered, I picked up a foul smell in that home. Now, nobody picked up the smell, but I picked up a foul smell, and mm. I knew the type of demon that was in that home because I smelt it. It was hiding one of the bedrooms, but I smelt it. It's how the discerning of spirits mm. work. So you will smell, you will taste, you will hear, mm. you will see. see. That is the gift of the discerning of spirits. It's not a gift where you all of a sudden understand, ah, something demonic is here. No. Yeah. You will have that encounter to discern the demonic, right? The discerning of spirits. But again, it's the discerning of Spirits. spirits, the discerning of the spirits of darkness. Yeah, right? the yeah, revelation the, the, gift. This this revelation gift is 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 so powerful because mm-hmm. I remember a, a lady once was desperate for prayer, mm-hmm. but she didn't discern that the the guest speaker, I think it was, uh, that attended their church meeting. She was so desperate for prayer, she didn't ask the Lord. Mm-hmm. She didn't operate in this discernment. She went forward for prayer. Mm-hmm. And what happened was the guest speaker had an unclean spirit on him. <laughs> you may be saying, what? Yeah. 
the lady was desperate for a touch from the Lord, so she went to the front. Because you can be a um, guest speaker operating rebellion. Yes, so this guest speaker had an unclean spirit on him. Because he's operating rebellion. Yes, and and because she didn't discern, Mm. uh, when he laid hands on her, that spirit literally attached itself to this woman. Mm -hmm. So when she came home, she couldn't understand Mm -hmm. what was happening to her. I mean, Mm -hmm. headaches. Mm -hmm. Pains in the head, pains in the in the neck. She couldn't, and she tried everything mm-hmm. until uh, she met us by chance. And uh, she said, "You know what? Uh, please pray for me. This, this, and that." And so, when I prayed for her, the Lord opened my eyes as I see in the spirit, and I began to see the hand that was laid on her was not a human hand. A demonic hand. It was a demonic hand. One and of the ways most people get possessed is because they allow the wrong person yes. to lay hands on them. Because they don't discern. They don't discern. The wrong person lays hands or, or even they don't have to lay hands. Another way they can transfer a spirit into you is to prophesy over you. Oh, yes. So they can either prophesy over you and transfer a demon mm. or they can lay hands on you. But it's the way almost 80, 90% of Christians yes. get possessed. By yeah. Because someone laid hands on them. Mm. And, and they don't get this. I mean, because, you know, they think anybody who preaches an anointing, anointed message must be anointed. Yes. But you must understand the supernatural world. You know, are you, you sorry, I'm a cut no, no, story. No. Have you, you finished? Yes, yes, I finished. Oh. I, I mean, this is why I we caution. I don't want to cut your story. <laughs> okay. No, this is why we caution, uh, you know, the people, women and men of God, be careful about just running after prophets and just, you know, being so trusting. And it doesn't mean that all prophets are bad. Yes. I love prophets. We are prophetic ministry. Yes, I mean, I'm a prophet as well. If you operate under a prophetic presbytery, then you're an authorized prophet. If you operate outside and you're doing your own scene and you're not under presbytery, Mm. then that is a problem. So let me just, we're talking about the discerning of spirits. Yes. And one of the things that happens with the Holy Spirit. Now, your ability to surrender determines, write this down, your ability to surrender determines the speed of the gift. Your ability to surrender determines the speed of the gift. Now, some of the gifts, well, actually all of these these manifestation gifts, Mm. when you're someone who can surrender and you understand how surrender works, the gifts, when they operate, come very fast. Yes. Like if I'm ministering and the word of knowledge operating... I'm not getting one word of knowledge. Yeah. I'm getting like 12 words of knowledge yeah. at the same time. Bam, 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 Very bam. Very fast. But then I have to ask which one first, Lord. Mm. And then the one highlights. And I start with that one. Yes. Same with many other gifts now. With the discerning of spirits works the same way. Maybe I can explain it this way. It's, and, and again, I'm just paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing. It's like the Holy Spirit literally leaps out of me to manifest the gift. Mm. And I'm following him. Yeah. I'm following him. I was in a meeting where there was a whole lot of ministers. There was a lady that turned up. And this lady was a well-known woman that traveled from church to church outside of Presbytery. Mm. She would prophesy over people and pray for them, anoint them, and so on. And so she turned up in the meeting. And as we were praying, I didn't know who she was. And as she was praying, as we were praying together in a group, she started to prophesy. But before I knew anything, <laughs> let me say it this way, before I knew anything, the Holy Spirit through me rebuked her. Right? Mm. So let me say it again. Let me say it again. You got to get this. So the lady starts to prophesy and, and I say, be still. I rebuke her. Now, That's happening before my mind even connects to my mouth, right? Yeah. Because there is a speed of operation of gifts that comes by your level of surrender. Surrender. Your level of surrender. Mm. There's a speed. And so sometimes I'm catching up by what the Holy Spirit is saying through me. I'm catching up later. Yeah. So I... So I, but remember, it's the Holy Spirit through me, (laughs) rebuke this woman. And everybody looked shocked. How can I come and rebuke this lady? I mean, she said this to me. She gave me that word and this and this and this. Mm. Mm. So 
We continued praying, and a few minutes later, she tried to prophesy again. And again, again, the Holy Spirit rebuked her and said, Come out of her. The next minute, this mm. woman that traveled and prophesied over so many people, mm. she manifested in the meeting. A face took on the face of an animal. I'm not going to tell you which animal it was. Mm. But a face took on the, the face of an animal. You, you, you could not see the woman anymore. We mm. call this in demonology a full oh. manifestation. A full manifestation. She now had the face of the demon inside her. Mm. And she started to claw on the walls. Of course, all the pastors were shocked. Yeah. That, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, it, not that I came in the meeting and I was saying, let me discern you, let me discern you, let me discern you. I just came to pray. But when you are open to the Holy Spirit and when you understand how surrender really works, there is a speed in the supernatural. Yeah. There's a speed mm. in the supernatural. Again, that is the discerning of spirits. You discern and you and, and God reveals the demonic that's yes. behind it. Even sometimes people may have plans and they may have visions. Sometimes people come to me and tell me, God told me to do this. And, and, I, and I say, uh -uh, are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Because I can see that there's a demonic spirit behind the motives. I can see the demonic. Mm -hmm. But discerning a spirit works that way. Yes. Right? Now, let's go on. Let's go on. Then you get the utterance gifts. The utterance gifts. And Jesse, we're almost out here. Uh, so we want to quickly do the utterance gifts. Give me the three utterance gifts. The utterance gifts are tongues, right. interpretation, and prophecy. Now, when it comes to tongues, there are five types of tongues, right? Five types. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel or, or go to my bookshop and get the CD on the various types of tongues. There are five different types of tongues, five different types. And, and the Bible talks about each one of them. There's even known tongues and unknown, unknown tongues. Unknown tongues. All right? Now, everybody understands speaking in tongues. They understand the gift. Yeah. And, and the Bible says you should speak in tongues more than anything else, right? Mm -hmm. More than you speak in your vernacular. Uh, then comes the gift of interpreting tongues. Now, that gift is a prophetic gift. It's the ability to translate the tongues speaking and communicate it back to, to others, others in your own language. That's mm. what it is, right? And then the gift of prophecy is the ability to proclaim the message from God. Mm. And you said something very important about yes. prophecy. Read that scripture again, 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 14, verse, verse 3. 3. Right. But he that prophesies speaks unto men to edify, exhort, and comfort. So any prophecy that comes to you comes for edification, exhaustion, exhaustion comfort. comfort. A prophecy should, must never make you fearful. Mm. Mustn't shock you. Mustn't give you regret. <laughs> mustn't, must not give you fear. If it does, it's not from God. This is so powerful. This is very powerful. This is so powerful. <laughs> uh, we're going to continue with it. Do not miss our next one-hour special. Amen. This is Dr. Silva Mudley. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudley. We're reminding you, you that, that miracles, miracles are normal. normal. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye.